Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Yes, you read that right. Today we are going to be painting this designer bag. So my friend Kiara is always giving me some of her dope fashion pieces and I'm just thankful that she has been trusting me over the years to put my own little creative twist to it. So that's what we're going to do today. But before we get started, we have to take some pure acetone and remove that first layer of paint on this bag. So yeah, we kind of just went straight for it. No regrets, R regrets. <laughs> you guys know whatever reference, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I know painting on such an expensive bag can be very intimidating. And honestly, my first designer bag, I believe it was a Louis Vuitton. I was so scared. I had to stare at it for like two days before I actually did anything to it. But once you get started, you kind of just realize, oh, it's just a bag. You know, it's my new canvas. So yeah, we're just kind of focusing it more so on the bottom because I'm not painting the top. So I'm okay if the sealant is still up there. Uh, but yeah, we basically did it on the bottom half of the bag. Now I'm just getting some craft paper. I wanna put this inside just so that the bag has more of a form so that I'm not working with too flimsy of a material while I paint. So I'm just gonna crumple that up and put it inside. Now that that is closed and a little bit more firm for me to work with, we are going to tape off the areas that we don't want to get paint. So I figured that I would cover the bottom because of the fact that this bag and just, you know, any bag in general, um, you'll get a lot of traction there. And I figured that it would just be safer to not paint that area um, just so that it doesn't end up looking scuffed later down the road because I could have very well painted it if I wanted to but you know over time even if I put my sealant and everything like that I knew that kind of where those feet are at the bottom of the purse that it would just end up scratching so we're just gonna cover that I'm showing you guys kind of how I managed to fold over the tape and now we have the whole bottom covered so you guys will see my design here in a little bit but I'm proceeding in taping the top half of the bag um, I'm doing this graffiti look. Kiara is a huge fan of modern art, pop art, and just really bright colors. So I'm going to be splattering the paint and everything, but I just didn't care to get it at the very top of the bag. So I took some tissue paper and tape and taped that down. So we're going to start off with some flat white paint and I'm using Angelus paints. This is good for leather goods. This is what people use when they're customizing shoes. The reason why I'm starting out with white is because we are dealing with a black bag. So going with our colors straight onto black would be extremely difficult. And by placing down this base layer, it'll help to show those colors more vibrantly. And you don't have to go on with like a boatload of layers down the road. <laughs> And also guys, keep in mind which side is the front of your purse and which side is the back. So this is the front. Um, I kind of knew based off of my own tape pattern, but if you need to put like a sticky note just to remind yourself, then I would definitely do that. You definitely don't want to like switch up your design and turn out mad <laughs> when it ends up being backwards, you know? But here is my design reveal. So I actually drew it on my iPad. I simply took a picture of it without you know, any paint on it, and then I just kind of mocked up what I had in my head so that I didn't end up messing up this really expensive bag and having a very angry customer. However, Kiara is always very easygoing and she's so trusting my, in my creative decisions. She's literally been commissioning me since I was in middle school, like a little girl. So um, it just means the world to me that she still gets projects with me. Literally, I feel like almost every month. She keeps me so inspired and I always love doing these projects for her. So I went and I grabbed this yellow color and I'm starting to just draft out what I have. Um, can you see like, honestly, if I went straight with the yellow without the white, especially on black, it would have turned out green. And so that would have taken me about 10 layers to do. Now, Angelus paints are really good. Their consistency is so thin and their color payoff is whew, 
amazing, like incomparable, but obviously it's just better to be safer than sorry and to put that prime layer down. And then I'm showing you guys that I kind of wanted to test out the splatter method. I just grabbed some yellow and like tapped on my brush, but we're gonna do more of that towards the end. So while that yellow layer is still drying, I'm gonna move on to the orange. And so I had an orange color, but I still wanted it to be a little bit more on the yellow orange side. So I just put a dash of it in that yellow color I already had. So yeah, for this step, I'm basically just laying down the foundation colors. This is only going to be the first layer because as you can see, there are just areas that the color isn't showing as opaque, which is completely fine. A lot of times I do have to go in with a second layer, sometimes three, um, especially with the yellow, it gets a little bit tricky. But as I'm working on these colors, I'm also kind of like stippling the edges because I really want it to have this airbrush effect. So it doesn't have to be like nice, clean lines, um, but I still want some areas to be nice opaque, uh, some areas to kind of overlap each other. I hope that kind of makes sense, but as you see, this yellow shape actually ended up being the G. I kind of was really interested in that G shape I made in Givenchy. Um, it kind of created like an arrow, which you'll see throughout the design um, and I even end up putting like a turquoise arrow on the back. So a small little detail that I'm sure most people might not even notice but for me as an artist and graphic designer those things kind of matter to me <laughs> and if anyone was to ever ask I would be overjoyed to share. Uh, but yeah so let's go ahead and just you know what I'm gonna stop talking for now so you guys can just see me painting the bag okay? Now, of course, before working on the back side of the bag, you wanna make sure that your front is very, very dry, fully dry. You definitely don't want it to end up sticking to your surface and then you pick it up and like a little patch of it ends up getting stuck because you didn't let it dry fully. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you knew that, but just figured I would let you know. Now you can see I've kind of been going in with those second and third layers to make those colors more vibrant, making sure you get into those crevices. And then you can get the rest of your paint colors in splatter away. This was so fun and so satisfying. I did it all over. And what's great is when it dries, it doesn't end up having that thick uh, splattered on texture this paint actually dries pretty flat, so that's awesome. And here we are finally working on the words. So of course I was referencing the image that I created on my iPad, and then I just thickened up each letter. So this doesn't have to be that clean or perfect or clean lined either because like I said, I wanted it to look like it was spray painted on there. So if it was spray paint, um, my advice in working with these types of letters is to make like the ends very bulgy because if you think about it, that's where like the first deposit of spray paint goes out and it usually ends up putting like a big drippy circle. I don't know if that makes much sense, but that was kind of what was going on in my head. And I kind of wanted to explain why I decided to paint Ghetto Till Proven fashionable on the back of the bag. So Kiara expressed that she wanted to have graffiti on her bag, right? So, I mean, I love Kiara, I love her style, and I just think it's amazing that she decided to do something super creative on a designer bag. But with that being said, I started to think about graffiti and especially with everything that's going on in the world, I think that we tend to forget that a lot of um, our pop culture and our style and our fashion comes from black culture. You know, I find it funny that graffiti used to be seen as um, vandalism. It used to be seen in lesser areas of the city, quote unquote, and it was even tied to gang violence. You know, it had all these negative connotations, but now, 
all the hip places have graffiti. All of the main streets and the music festivals, you know, we want to have street artists out there. And I think that's really cool that now it is appreciated as an art form, but I definitely think that we need to remember where it came from. So I'm really happy with how this bag turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I also hope that my friend Kiara enjoys her new bag. If you haven't followed her on Instagram, go check her out. She's at Kiara Looks. She's a dope black fashion stylist and I just wish I could have her closet on the daily but until then I'm excited to be making more pieces for her so if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you hit that subscribe button because we want you here for a long time and not just a good time okay honey <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye